which is the Natural Asset Companies or NACS, N-A-C, NACS. And uh, so I don't know if any of you guys have heard of this before. Um, it's relatively new, but this thing could be leading to something big. So the NAC is a newly listed asset class created by the New York Stock Exchange with the premise given to preserve and restore the natural assets of the earth. Of course, that's what they say it is. Oh, we created this new listing to help fund the preservation and, and to restore natural or, or nature, the natural assets of the earth, because that's what climate change and the environment's all about. We just love the planet and we must we must keep it going. Mm. They always like to throw some stuff sugar on there to make it look good. The NAC will be uh will allow the formation of specialized corporations. Oh, here we go. We're already seeing it. Specialized corporations that will essentially generate massive profit off of land and the assets from them. So they tell everybody, hey, this is for the preservation of the of the planet, of the cl uh, climate, of the environment, of nature. But ultimately what it is, is, oh, we're going to create specialized corporations to profit from nature. Well, there's more to it than just that. But ultimately, this is the leading factor for it. Whether it's national parks, rainforests, farmland, or the resources from them like water, wood, food, fish, air, all these things, these NACs will use these assets to generate infinite profit, even if the NAC doesn't even own the land. So that's the kicker of it. Even if they don't own the land, they're going to have rights to what's being generated off of it to generate infinite profit. I'll explain how that will work later. So hang with me. So if we take a look, we go to the New York Stock Exchange website. They even have a fancy little page set up for this. Now, as we go through this, I'm going to bring you back. As we go through this, I know there's going to be a lot of just maybe some stuff that's not interesting to listen to, maybe a tad, you know, just technical and whatnot. But I want you guys to pay attention to this because what this could be leading to could be huge. Um, in the long run of that Antichrist beast system coming. And remember, a lot of this technical mumbo jumbo and a lot of this stuff may not be super interesting, but this is what is really leading to the big flashing stuff that we always see across the news and whatnot. We always see the repercussions, but what's it actually leading to? What is the why behind this? And this is that. So a lot of focus was on COP28 and what they were pushing. Well, COP28 has a lot to do with what we're going to talk about tonight. So we head over to the New York Stock Exchange and we take a look at the NAC because they have a wonderful page set up. It's natural or national, natural asset companies to address the large and complex challenges of climate change and the transition to a more sustainable economy. The New York Stock Exchange and the Intrinsic Exchange Group, IEG, we'll talk about them in just a second are pioneering a new class of listed company based on nature and the benefits that nature provides, termed ecosystem services. NACs will capture the intris intrinsic and productive value of nature and provide a store of value based on the vital assets that underpin our entire economy and make life on Earth possible. Examples of natural assets that could benefit from that NAC structure include natural landscapes such as forests, wetlands, and coral reefs, as well as working lands such as farms. So they're talking about in basically all land, uh, land types. This thing covers all of that, as well as the resources that come from them, the ecosystem that comes from it. So they've got a whole overview of this thing. So let's keep going. It says how NACs can make a difference. Capture the positive externalities of preserving nature. To convert natural assets into financial capital, IEG has developed an accounting framework to measure ecological performance. Natural assets produce an estimated $125 trillion annually. Don't know where they get that number from. They just throw it in there like they normally do. And global ecosystem services, such as carbon sequestration, biodiversity, hang on to that word, and clean water. 
Allocate capital for our future. The NAC is transformational solution whereby natural ecosystems are not simply a potential uh, resource to extract, but an in, uh, investable product, productive asset, which provides financial capital to responsible stewards of ecological resources. As a publicly traded equity, NACs will enable investors to allocate capital efficiently to meet their sustainability objectives. So here we go. We got this, the sustainability aspect of this already coming into play. We know this is a part of the UN agenda, sustainable development goals. What's been one of the leading factors behind it? It has to do with ecosystems, nature, different land and all these things. And now they're inserting the profitability factor to it along with biodiversity. Now we want to hang on to that. Remember now, one of the men who was most excited about the creation of the NAC, of course, would be Black BlackRock Larry Fink. So from here, this is uh, what is this? This is from 2017. That's right. New York City or New York City, New York Stock Exchange New Investment Vehicle Natural Asset Companies or NAC will tap into ESG fever. So these are connected. This is just the side that you've probably never heard of. Now, I'm sure some of you have. This is probably one that you haven't. But we can see here through this article, it says, in return, investors will get access to a new form of sustainable investment. A space has enthralled the likes of BlackRock CEO Larry Fink over the past several years. We understand he's been pushing ESG hard for how many years now? Hmm. Maybe this has been underneath all of that. We just didn't know it. And I'll explain again at the very end why this is so important. But it says uh, over the past several years, even though there remain big unanswered questions about it, a 2020 report from the U.S. SIF Foundation a nonprofit that advocates for the adoption of sustainable investing found that one out of every three dollars under professional management in the U.S. at the end of 2019 was managed with sustainable investment strategy. There is a reason for that. And uh, let's see here. If we keep going, it says when uh, when public. A NAC will be required to file financial statements in accordance with U.S. accounting rules, just like any other publicly traded company. However, IEG, we haven't gotten to them yet, but we've seen them pop up how many times already? We're going to get to them in just a second. Whose investors include the Inter-American Development Bank, the Rockefeller Foundation. Hey, there we go. And Aberdare Ventures has also developed a framework to measure the ecological performance of the NAC as a way to make up for any gaps in the traditional metrics. The ecological standards will include relevant, reliable, and understandable information on the flows of the ecosystem services the NACs produce and their stocks of natural capital assets. Former Financial Accounting Standards Board Chairman Robert Hertz said in the statement Tuesday, hers and several accounts uh, accounting firms help advise IEG on ecolom economical framework development. Okay. Again, I know there's a lot of technical stuff at the very end. I'm going to summarize what all this means to make it very simple in a nutshell. I just want to make sure we have a firm understanding of what all this stuff is before we get there. So hang with me. I'll explain it all at the end if I've already lost you. But we've already got things like a Rockefeller. Uh, we already got things like Larry Fink and BlackRock. We've already got things coming in from the New York Stock Exchange and whatnot. There's going to be more names popping up connected to this. Now, along with the New York Stock Exchange is the group IEG or the Intrinsic Exchange Group. We've already seen them mentioned several times already. And from the article, we see that they get investments from three specific groups. You got the Inter-American uh, Developmental Bank. This is a branch of a multi multilateral banking system, a part of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, Treasury. So this is a multi multilateral banking uh, branch, similar to like what the World Bank is. They are multi multilateral. Say that five times fast. Banking uh, group. And so this is another one, but it is connected to the U.S. Treasury. Then you've got Aberdare Ventures, which is a venture venture capital firm focused on digital healthcare. Interesting that they would be a part of this, right? And then you got the Rockefeller Foundation, no surprise, with all the connections that they have. Specifically, if you guys haven't checked it out, you got to check out the New Age, uh, the End Times New Age series, because we talk about how intertwined the Rockefellers are with the UN and other uh, globally changing 
things as well as the spiritual aspect of it. So make sure you check that out. But it's no surprise they would be involved with something like this. Now, if we take a look at some key points on IEG's website, we'll gain a peek at their playbook. So let's take a look at the IEG site. Intrinsic Exchange Group, IEG, is introducing a new type of company whose security captures the value of natural assets and the ecosystem services they produce. Uh, NACs are fundamentally different from the traditional companies because they are chartered to protect, restore, and grow. There's all the sugar. Uh, the natural assets under their management to foster healthy ecosystems. No, it's about money. We'll get to that in a second. Enlisting the equity market uh, to meet the scale of the problem, IEG partnered with the New York Stock Exchange to create a special listing section for NAC equal, uh, equities, and they're going through the process of obtaining SEE approval for the NAC listing rules, which hmm, seems they've already gotten that. But it says, by taking a NAC public through an IPO, the market transaction will succeed in converting the long understood but to date uh, unpriced value of nature. So long understood value of nature, but it was just not uh, correctly priced. Now, apparently it is. And they're going to take it into a financial capital. This monetization event will generate the funding needed to manage, restore, and grow healthy ecosystems around the world and bring us closer to achieving a truly sustainable circular economy. So here's the thing. They're throwing more sugar on there, but what this is about, we'll see at the end, isn't about making making the nature pay for its own management type of deal, which what they're talking about. No, this actually has to do with uh, creating, again, an infinite profit while making a wealth transfer. And I don't want to jump too far ahead, but this has to do with another wealth transfer system. But it's also a part of the circular economy. Now, we've talked about the circular economy in the past. It's kind of a system that tends to get forgotten about. It's something that the WEF really wants to do, the World Economic Forum, as well as the UN. Circular economy fits in line with exactly what they've been talking about with the you will own nothing uh, phrase that everybody likes to throw around. What they want to do is they don't want anybody to own anything except for the uh, the appropriate corporations where they will rent you everything, cars, clothes, housing, um, uh, any object that you own or have in the house, they're going to rent to you. And then when you're done with it, you then return it. They will refurbish it and rent it to the next person. Um, again, I've got videos and stuff on this. If you don't know anything about the circular economy, but this has to do with that, all of the taking over of nature and utilizing that to generate money has to do with the circular economy. You're not going to own it. They will, and they'll rent it to you. Again, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but you'll see what I mean as we continue to go through this. Now, if we get back to this, this is our mission. To convert natural asset value to financial capital, to provide the resources necessary to fund conservation and regenerative practices at scale, Powering us to a sustainable future for the benefit of nature and humanity. So here's the skinny, to put it simply. When you begin to turn basic biosystems like air, water, foods, medicine, even things like tourism, pollination, carbon, etc., into not only a financial asset, but you also turn it into a tradable asset, you then turn the entirety of nature into a sellable asset. So what would be public things, not only the land itself, but what comes out of it, even free things like air and water, things like tourism, going and seeing things, you know, that's stuff that we don't necessarily have to pay for. We can just go and enjoy. What they're trying to do is monetize that, own that, and make it a sellable asset, which will then give them infinite profit. So not only does, does it have to do with the land itself, but it also has to do with the resources, even the free ones. They want to monetize that stuff. Again, you will own nothing. They'll own it, but you will own nothing. That means anyone who decides to buy gives them the ownership over the nature's services. This can, and they've already said that they are, remember that, but this can be used to introduce a carbon credit system. Now, this is something I talked about like a year ago. 
haven't talked about it in a while, but this is what it's leading to is a carbon credit system. So again, I've talked about this, but let's just kind of do a refresher on this. Now there's a woman by the name of Barbara Barsman, who is the CEO of Rabobank Carbon Credit Bank. Rabobank, which I'm sure if you guys know anything about the financial systems, know about them. Well, they have a completely separate entity, still a part of Rabobank, but it's the Rabo Carbon Bank. And she's CEO of this. And she has spoken about everyone having a carbon credit wallet. Now, we talk a lot about digital IDs, right? We talk a lot about digital wallets and we talk a lot about CBDCs. But what doesn't get talked about is something that can slide right into that called the carbon credit. If you have a digital wallet and a carbon credit is digital as well, that can just get slid right in. And they're preparing for this. They're preparing to make sure everybody has carbon credits. You will only be able to use so much carbon, either monthly or yearly, weekly, however they plan to do it. And you're going to be limited to that. So even if you have the CBDC to purchase something, if you don't have enough carbon credits, you cannot purchase it. So again, you would have a certain amount of thing, but what she goes on to talk about is if somebody does have carbon credits, they can sell it to somebody who doesn't have enough carbon credits for a profit. Does that sound kind of like what's coming from the NAC thing where if they've got a natural ecosystem product, what they're going to do is they're going to try and sell it to you similar to carbon credits. So we're getting kind of an idea of how they're trying to monetize the environment even more, why they're so focused on getting this forward and why they continue to inject climate change and the environment into things like technology and banking and whatnot, because they're trying to monetize it even further. And it gets deeper than that. Again, I'll, I'll wrap it all up in a nice pretty bow at the end. Say what you want. Or say you wanted to go out to a restaurant, but not only does that food have a price, but it's got a carbon credit price on top of it. So you'll be looking at a menu that's got how much it costs, but how much it costs for carbon credits as well. And if you don't believe me on that, they've already got something similar going on in Dublin, Ireland. This is a menu, a real menu from last year from a restaurant in Dublin, Ireland. If you look... Say you want the tandoori lamb. Well, that's going to cost you $17.50, but it's also going to cost you 8 kg and carbon. Every single thing on the menu has a carbon price to it. Now, there's no carbon credits right now, but they're prepping. They're conditioning you. They're getting you ready. I don't know how many of you have been on, say, like a... a like Amazon or something, and you're looking for something and the company lists how much carbon uh, the product took to make. Yeah, it's on it's on there too. Not all listings, but on some of them. Different websites will list how much the carbon is. So they're prepping. They're getting ready. It's not here yet. But we've also seen things like MasterCard team up with Doconomy, which Doconomy is a uh, basically they have an app system that tracks your carbon footprint of if, whether you travel, you eat, what you buy, what you do. If it produces some type of carbon, it'll keep track on the the uh, the uh, their their app. But they also introduced, which was discontinued last year, was a carbon credit card. And we've seen other companies that were doing something similar where they were working on it. Now, it's not here yet. It looks like they've stopped it altogether, but we just never know what they might come out with next. But they have been preparing for that. We've seen them preparing in the way to get it done. They are... Trying to not only monetize nature and monetize all of just even the free ecosystem resources that come from it, but they're also trying to make it in a way where they can even monetize the use of the land, even if they don't own it, as well as control what you can do accordingly through carbon credits and monetize that as well. The area of the climate angle has been entirely silent. For a while now. Again, last time we even talked about this was roughly a year ago. But just because it's silent doesn't mean that's gone away. Keep that in mind. They tend to push a lot of stuff, uh, other things out 
while holding this stuff back. Just last year, there was a at the WEF Davos meeting, there was somebody talking about creating carbon footprint trackers for not only companies for but for individuals as well. It's still there. It's just the spotlight isn't sitting on it. And again, we talked about the circular economy side of this. You will own nothing and you will have to rent literally everything. I don't know how they plan on renting food. I'm not sure they want that back. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but just, again, there's another aspect to that. So all of these things so far, NAX, circular economy, carbon credits, fits snugly into that umbrella agenda that we know as sustainability or the sustainability goals. All of these things, just we don't have to jam them in. We don't have to stick the triangle peg into the circular uh, hole or anything like that. They snit, they snit, they fit nice and snug in the sustainability goals. <laughs>